Hey, so wouldn't it be cool if I could take any subwoofer array and double the number of elements without changing the shape that it makes? So that's what I want to talk about today. Just a little tool to put in your toolbox for your array design. Um, something that's been coming up for my students a lot recently. So imagine a situation where you have some array like this, and let's say you say, this is perfect. I love the, what this is doing, but I need to get a lot more subs in here and I can only stack them too high before I start blocking sight lines. So how can we do that? We don't want to change the coverage pattern. So I want to introduce you to this interesting idea of where the acoustic center of a subwoofer is. So if I put the subwoofer in the middle of this design here, then if the acoustic center of this box is at the, in the middle of this box where I used to think it was, then I would expect that at these microphones that I have placed on the design that are equidistant from this box, that we should have matching phase traces, okay? So we'll go over here to the measurement viewer and we'll zoom in and we will uh, go to the first microphone, auto set delay, and then we'll store that. And here we go, we've got a stored trace here. Now, if they're in the center, I expect the phases to match, so I switch over to microphone two, and they don't match. So that makes me think, okay, maybe the acoustic center of this box is not the center of the device, maybe it's somewhere else. Can I find it by moving the subwoofer around? So I go here to the subwoofer's properties, and I say, okay, let's move it back a little bit. And to show you what's happening, now the grill of the speaker is at the zero point of the design. And if we go back to microphone one, auto set delay, and now we go to microphone two, they're still not on top of each other. So where do we need to move this subwoofer to make these phase graphs match? What about 0 0.2 meters backwards? Back to microphone one, auto set delay, microphone two. Wow, okay, perfectly on top of each other now, almost, right? Where did we end up? 0 0.2, negative 0 0.2 in the X axis here. So that makes me think that the acoustic center of this device is actually out here. So there's um, some articles from Merlin Van Veen who references some white papers um, that go deeper into this and Merlin Van Veen even created a calculator to help you estimate exactly where the acoustic center of a device is based on its driver and the size of the box. But just through some trial and error here, we pretty quickly discovered where the acoustic center of this device is, at least as it appears to these microphones. And you can do this at home with a real subwoofer in your audio analyzer, or you can play around with it and figure this out in your modeling software. So what's really powerful about this is that if I have this one sub and I say, hey, I really like this design, uh, but I need more subwoofers in here without changing the pattern, and I can't stack them up, I can't stack them sideways, so what can I do? What if I just insert another subwoofer along the x-axis here on the other side, and now we have two devices where the acoustic center is in the center here, and so we should be able to turn them on together without changing the pattern. Let's just double check that. So I've got one soloed here, and I'll do a prediction. There we go, not perfectly omnidirectional, but pretty omnidirectional. And so I expect that this copy of the other device would perform exactly the same, but you know, slightly omnidirectional in the other direction. There we go. And now what if we turn them on together? I would expect to see almost the same pattern because of what we've been talking about so far. And it, that's what it looks like, right? It's still kind of this egg shape we haven't modified it too much. So this tool, this idea, has solved two problems recently for two of my students. One of them was trying to make just a vertical, tall 
line of subwoofers, and he, want, he would have stacked them forever, but he just ran into limits for how high he could stack them. And then he didn't know what to do with the rest of his subs. And so we talked about it, and one solution he could have tried is to create another stack, turn and face them at each other, and you should get this kind of result, right? Another student had a similar situation. I was helping him with the subwoofer array design for this show that he was working on. And I started looking at some different options and this works pretty well for the coverage, but we need a lot more subs in here. Um, so we can stack these two high and get at least four, but we needed to get at least eight. So let's see if we can use what we've learned on this design to see if we can double the number of possible subwoofers here. So I'm going to do a prediction, then we'll take a snapshot of it, and then we'll compare it uh, to our new design and see how close we can get. So here's our design, and I got a snapshot of it. And now how can we redesign this? So taking a look at my design here, we can start thinking, well, from, from the test we did earlier, we know that the acoustic center is somewhere out here in front of this device. So what if we rotate them around and try the same kind of idea? So something like this, where they're pointing in at each other again, but that center again is right here. So it should appear like the source is right in here. All right, let's look at a prediction. All right, there's our new prediction. It looks a little bit fatter. Let's compare it. So I have this, this was the original one and I made it semi-transparent so we can see here. So we see in this new design, we got a little bit wider with our coverage, but we're just as deep. So we didn't get the exact same pattern, but pretty similar. So to me, this seems like a super helpful design tool and I use it pretty often. So if I have found a coverage that I like, an array design that I like, but I just need to double the number of boxes or somehow increase the number of boxes in the design to meet the SPL requirements or power scaling issues with the mains, then this is one option that I can look at. So I'd love for you to test this out and see if this is helpful for you. And I wanna let you know that I have another video about how this might help you make your subwoofers couple with a wall. So if you're ever in a situation where the reflection from a wall is creating a null, it's a problem for you, you can turn that subwoofer around and figure out the spacing in the same way we've done here, but instead of coupling with another subwoofer, you can make and couple with the wall. So I'll link to that video in the description for this video. So hope this has been helpful and let me know what questions it brings up for you.